And uh, please go ahead. Okay, uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity to uh, for me to give a talk. Um, I am Masaki Kotera, and uh, this is a joint work with uh, Dr. Tabei and Dr. Yamanishi, and uh, who are also present in this uh, conference. And uh, the title of my talk is uh, Supervised de novo uh, Reconstruction of Metabolic Pathways from Metabolome Scale uh, Compound Sets. And since I am from Japan, uh, in order to come to Germany, well, uh, I uh, conducted a pathway finding from uh, Japan to Germany. And I found it very far, but it is very, very far. And I also conducted a similarity search between uh, Germany and Japan. Yeah, uh, there is a very famous gate. It is a beautiful gate in Germany. Yeah, we also have gates. And uh, in Be Berlin has a lot of famous bears. Yeah, we also have a lot of bears. Yeah, so uh, we've, uh, as a result of the analysis, we found that we are very uh, similar to each other. We are very glad to know that. Okay, so let's go back to business. So uh, some of the metabolic pathways have been uh, discovered so far. However, uh, not all metabolic pathways are identified yet, and uh, different organisms uh, have different sets of metabolic pathways. So the uh, questions is, uh, question is, uh, how can we reconstruct uh, metabolic pathways in an organism of interest? And in fact, many studies use predefined pathway, or we call it a reference pathway, and map the genes on it. Well, uh, this uh, slide explains, uh, shows the example metabolic pathway, and where the circle, uh, repre uh, circles represent metabolic compounds and rectangles represent enzymes. And uh, this is a, a strategy of reference-based pathway reconstruction. Uh, Many uh, databases, including CAG database, uh, collect the uh, known pathways in literatures. And, uh, as a, oh, too, sorry. and a re reference pathway is constructed based on the combination of the uh, known pathways in literatures. And please note that this is uh, based on the chemical structure transformation, and it is a reference pathway uh, solely. It doesn't think, uh, think about the difference of the uh, organisms. And if we know some information about genome sequences and some other information, we can map the genes onto it, uh, resulting in the species-specific pathways as, uh, as shown in the colored, uh, uh, green, green colored pathway. And in that sense, uh, we can say that the species-specific pa pathway is just a part of a reference pathway. And uh, this, this is needed for the reference-based pathway reconstruction. So, uh, but the focus of this study is similar, but something different. That is, uh, what if pathways are not predefined? This is a challenge, and for the, uh, and, uh, the de novo reconstruction of pathway is needed. So uh, there have been many, uh, not many, but some studies for the de novo pathway reconstructions. And in my view, uh, the de novo re uh, pathway reconstruction can be uh, classified uh, in many ways. And uh, one, uh, one criteria is it, whether it is uh, compound feeding or reaction feeding. And this slide explains the difference of the compound feeding framework and a reaction feeding framework. And in the uh, compound feeding framework, the uh, target or source compound is given, and uh, uh, the method uh, predicts the existence of the uh, intermediate compound. So uh, this is a compound feeding framework. And in reaction feeding framework, uh, many of the chemical structures are already given, and the presence or absence of the uh, possible reactions connecting the compounds are predicted in the method. This is a reaction feeding framework. And the de novo uh, pathway reconstruction methods also can be also uh, classified based on whether or not it is based on the predefined chemical transformation rules, or whether or not source or target compounds are sim uh, specified or not. So the objective of this study is a reaction filling uh, framework. And the input is a large scale compound set, and the output is a reaction network that connects compounds. And the objective is development of a de novo uh, pathway reconstruction without predefined chemical transformation rules. 
Okay, so uh, let's go uh, move on to the methods. The reaction feeling framework is formulated as a problem to assess the uh, enzymatic reaction likeness of uh, compound compound pairs. And this slide gives you an image of what I mean by enzymatic reaction likeness. So, for example, given this pair of compounds, uh, does this look like an enzymatic reaction? I would say, yes, this looks like an enzymatic reaction. It is a part of the enzymatic reaction. And in fact, there have been three enzyme reactions that catalyze this kind of reaction. And yeah, so this looks like, look, looks like an enzymatic reaction. And what about this? this? Does this look like an enzymatic reaction? I would say, no, it doesn't look like it. And uh, in fact, there is no, reaction, no enzymatic reaction that catalyzes this reaction into this re reaction. So uh, enzymatic reaction uh, likeness means that uh, whether or not a, com a compound pair uh, can, can be converted to each other by an enzymatic reaction. Okay, so the reaction feeding framework is to uh, distinguish this kind of pair and this kind of pair. So uh, I, uh, we, we used the, uh, this kind of pair as, uh, as a compound pair, uh, as a positive examples. It is uh, what we call reactant pairs that, that are found in non-enzymatic reactions. And the remaining uh, all combination of pairs are negative compound compound pairs. Okay, this is a negative pair. And, uh, uh, okay, so, and please note that the number of uh, known reactant pairs is very limited compared with uh, all combinations of the negative compound compound pairs. Okay, so uh, the calculation is very tough, and uh, in the previous work, we uh, dealt with this problem with using graph theory-based method, which is a graph isomorphism, pro graph, graph isomorphism problem. Uh, but in this study, uh, in order for the better calculation speed, uh, we, uh, we, we apply the chemical structure fingerprints, where the presence or absence of the uh, chemical substructures in the molecule is presented as a zero or one. And uh, in this study, uh, we, uh, call, uh, we represent a chemical structure fingerprint as phi C, as written here. And there have been already many uh, fingerprints chemical fingerprints, and in this study, I used uh, these, eight, uh, these eight fingerprints. And by using these eight fi uh, fingerprints, uh, we defined a feature vector for the compound pair C and C prime. And uh, here, I'd like to introduce two, uh, uh, two operators for differential features and common features of the two fingerprints. And here, it gives an uh, example. And uh, for example, the uh, common features represent a common bit of the two uh, fingerprints, and this is an example. And uh, differential features uh, means a subtraction of a uh, fingerprint from another. And uh, please, uh, please note that there are, uh, it has a direction from one to another and the, uh, and the other ways. So uh, there, uh, there are three types of the uh, features can be uh, defined. And by uh, using these features, uh, we defined the diff-only feature vector for the compound pair that only think, thinks about the differential features of the compound pairs. And we also defined the diff-common feature vector, which also considers the common features of the, uh, of the uh, compound pair. And these uh, feature vectors were uh, subjected to the uh, support vector machine, or SPM. Now, ordinarily, uh, SVM uh, uses uh, L2 regularization uh, in order to prevent uh, overfeeding, and uh, we call it uh, L2 SVM. And uh, however, uh, this, uh, this has uh, almost no uh, interpretability, and it has, uh, for the, uh, most of the uh, model weights, uh, becomes non zero. And we uh, also use the L1 SVM for the uh, in using the uh, L1 regularization uh, to enhance the interpretability. And this uh, L1 regularization uses, uh, introduces sparsity into model weights, and so, and so that the, uh, the resulting model weights uh, are om are almost, uh, in, in many uh, model weights, uh, become zero, and a very limited number of uh, model weights will become non-zero, which helps the easier interpretation. 
quickly, so uh, let's move, to, move on to the results and discussion. Okay. This slide showed the uh, uh, flow of the predicting enzymatic reaction likeness, and that uh, data that, that taken from the our pair database, which contains 13,000 reaction pairs, which are used as positive examples. And uh, there are 45 million compound pairs uh, that are not uh, reactant pairs, that, uh, which are used as the negative examples. And uh, the similar compound pairs were filtered out using jacquard co coefficient. Uh, this is because uh, it is already known that the, uh, the pairs in enzymatic reactions are, uh, are similar to each other. So uh, removing the dissimilar compound pairs uh, will, will be the uh, most uh, pr practical for uh, uh, practical problems, and it will become the more difficult problem. Well, and uh, chemical structures uh, are, are converted into chemical structure fingerprints, and if only and if common feature vectors were generated for all compounds, uh, compound pairs, and L2 and L1 uh, SVM was applied to the compound pairs. Okay, so and, uh, we conducted the five-fold cross-validation for uh, compound pairs, and the predicted performance was represented as uh, AUC scores, which is the uh, area under the ROC scores. And if the prediction is just a random, then the, it would become, uh, the AUC scores will become 0 0.5. And if the predi uh, prediction was perfect, then it, this score would become 1.0. So the uh, greater the value, the better the result, okay? And we also uh, define the baseline uh, method, uh, that is the uh, direct use of chemical structure similarity between the query compound-compound pair. So as you can see, uh, all of our proposed method performs better than uh, a baseline method. And uh, L2, uh, L1 SVM performed a little bit better than the SP, uh, L2 SPM. And uh, there were not significant difference among the eight fingerprints and uh, no significant difference among the, uh, between the diff common and diff only. And uh, in the five-fold cross-validation, the compound pair uh, taken away from the training set randomly. And, uh, I, and we also uh, conducted a different kind of cross-validation, which, uh, which we call uh, leave pathway out cross-validation. In this cross validation, uh, one of the pathways, such as uh, glycolysis or TC cycle, uh, was removed from the training set, and the predictive performance to the reconstruct the removed pathway was estimated. And in this uh, slide, the horizontal, uh, sorry, vertical axis represents AUC scores, and horizontal axis represents a, a pathway index, which is a, a variety of pathways defined in the tag pathway. And for example, this uh, circle represents a glycolysis, and this is a TCA cycle. And as you can see, the uh, AUC scores uh, uh, varies compared with the five-fold cross-validation. And this is because the uh, uh, this this is uh, if this would become the uh, show so, so that uh, leave one pathway out, uh, pathway out cross validation is a bit more difficult problem, and if the uh, pathway contains a very specific uh, chemical transformation patterns, uh, that it, it is observed that the prediction would be more difficult. Okay, so and. Uh, L1 SVM has generally an uh, advantage uh, for the uh, over S L2 SVM uh, in terms of the interpretability. And this uh, slide shows, uh, shows the number of extracted features among different met methods. And the uh, vertical ax axis represents the uh, extracted features, number of extracted features. And the uh, all means the uh, number of features uh, in the diff common feature vector and diff only feature vector. And as you can see, <coughs> the number of uh, extracted, extracted features in, uh, by L1 SVM is much smaller than that of uh, L2 SVM. And this uh, helps the interpretation. And by using these uh, extracted features, we can draw a picture like this, the structure transformation network specific to enzymatic reactions. 
In this uh, figure, nodes represent the substructures defined in PubChem fingerprints, and the size of the nodes represents the importance or the weights of substructures for the uh, calculation of enzymatic reaction likeness, and edges represent the uh, chemical uh, substructure transformation uh, found in, uh, uh, in a compound pair. And uh, the, for example, the, this, is, uh, this edge represents the transformation uh, from uh, aldehyde to carboxylate, which is a very typical reaction. Okay, so let's move on to the uh, prediction of novel pathways. So uh, after uh, the validation of our method, we uh, co conducted the all to all calculation of the uh, Enzym, uh, enzyme reaction, uh, enzymatic reaction likeness, and it is, uh, and we made a comparison of computational time. As I already mentioned, uh, there have been some uh, uh, de novo reconstruction uh, methods, uh, but uh, their method does not <coughs> uh, does not consider about the all to all uh, prediction. So. Uh, if it were to take uh, to uh, subject the all to all comparison uh, or to all calculation, then it would take thousands of hours. But in our case, uh, it only took four point hours for the all calculation. It is very clear. Okay, so and this is uh, just a part of generated uh, metabolic network, and uh, with a closer look of the chemical structure, we can uh, obtain the newly predicted compound pairs like this and they can be classified as uh, whether or not the chemical transformation patterns are already known. And uh, these pairs, uh, the transformation patterns of these pairs are already known and in, uh, already uh, found in the known enzymatic reactions. And these, uh, with a look at this, uh, we can say that this could happen. Uh, it is reasonable to happen. And uh, the remaining these kind of pairs uh, doesn't have the transformation patterns which are already known, mean, meaning the, uh, some pairs uh, doesn't look like to occur. Uh, but uh, with, uh, uh, with look at, looking at these, kind, uh, these remaining pairs, some pairs are found to be uh, like to, to, likely to occur. Uh, just looking at uh, chemical structures, but uh, without uh, that, uh, without known uh, transformation pattern. Okay, so this is the conclusion. We developed a novel, the novel metabolic pathway reconstruction method in the reaction feeding framework, and which does not use predefined rules. And uh, machine learning of, uh, for the enzymatic reaction likeness, that is, uh, whether or not uh, compound pairs are possibly converted to each other by enzymatic reaction. And uh, we uh, achieved a successful reconstruction of previously known metabolic pathway in KEG, and we achieved a faster prediction for metabolome scale compound sets. And this is the end of my talk, and please visit us at poster 0132. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. So you have identified a lot of new reactions. Yeah. So did you take any steps to identify any of the enzymes catalyzing this reaction, either in using the genomes or maybe characterizing it in the lab? Have yeah. you taken any steps to understand what are the enzymes and their genes catalyzing this function? Yeah, uh, we uh, we are trying to solve that uh, to connect the genome, uh, our the newly predicted reactions into the genome information. And in order to do that, uh, we uh, I guess we want to uh, we, we want to uh, organize that uh, predicted uh, what kind of enzyme, uh, what kind of for example, EC numbers can be uh, given for the for the predicted reaction. And uh, we, I guess we have to use the RNA-seq or something for the uh, expression, data, uh, expression data and link the sequence data to the EC numbers or some uh, reaction data. Then it might be possible to link for the, our predicted reactions into the uh, genome data. Yep. So what about uh, taking into account uh, several substrates and products? Several substrates? Ah, yeah. Uh, uh, we only considered a pair of compounds. So, the, for example, the existence of the cofactors, there are some other 
issues is not considered. Yeah, so in that case, we uh, just uh, intended to make a template pathway. So the uh, for the uh, yeah, so we have to uh, we we need to refine for uh, more to consider some other factors. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I think so, yeah. Uh, sorry? Ah, uh, well, we we haven't yet, and uh, yeah, we have to think about it. Sorry. Um, thank you for the talk. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. It does. It does affect. And uh, for the uh, for the better, uh, for the, uh, the faster calculation, we uh, well, there there was a much uh, much much negative examples. And for the to in order to balance the calculation, then uh, we use we have to use less numbers of negative pairs. And it, uh, in that case, uh, it will take less time. But uh, I, I think the uh, Mm, accuracy was get uh, yeah, low, lower, and yeah, so the the proportion of the uh, ne negative pairs against the positive pairs is uh, one of the uh, one of the points we have to consider. Yeah, I have a question that is slightly related, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, And uh, actually, we are now calculating the, uh, the pathway for the metabolic, uh, secondary metabolic pathways. And uh, yes, but uh, uh, we are uh, just thinking about the uh, all, all to all chemical structure comparison and without thinking the genomic information at, the, at this moment. Uh, in that case, we, we, we haven't distinguished the 